Good evening and welcome back to our weekly question and answer series for Nash.org. Question. During a discussion, someone mentioned that one may not attach a hood or to a jacket nor zipper in a lining of a coat on Shabbos. Buttons and zippers are motor on Shabbos. So what is the prohibition? We know there is a lot of connections, chiburim, in a clothing, which is not considered tfir, um, it's not considered sewing together. Like you just mentioned, um, a zipper is not considered sewing. Buttons is not considered sewing together because the actual zipper or buttons shows that it is a thing which is made to open and close. So when a person sees um, a thing which is zippered together, he doesn't see it as it was uh, sewed together and therefore it's not a problem. The same will also go to Velcro. There's not a problem to connect a hood to a coat through Velcro or uh, any other thing through Velcro. So therefore putting in a lining into a coat, for instance a uh, winter coat to putting in a lining is not a problem even if you put it in and it will stay the whole winter because the essence that it's only a zipper or velcro shows that it's not something which is sewed together it's not called it's not called fear this is how the Zalman Oirbach Paskens and Shmir Shabbos Kelechus of Pairik Tezvov or Reich Lamad Beis and Harav Yashev in Koivetz Ara Shabbos Gilian Lamad Beis Osi Umadi Dalf. But Haravozen and Shal Shivas Shaivet Alaivi Chayle Gimel Simani in Aleph holds that even a zipper, if it is zippered in for a very long time, it might be a chashash of tefira. So therefore, regarding putting in a lining in a coat, it is Kedai Leketchila you should put it in during the weekdays and not on Shabbos if it is made to stay for the whole winter and if you forgot to put it in the weekdays and you want to put it in on Shabbos so Harafarka she Shabbos Kalocha Perik Chov Zayin Umad Kif Paidala Paskens that you should take it out during the winter a couple of times in order to be Choshesh for Avosner that if it is in for a very long time, it might be a chashash of sphere. So again, if it's possible to do it in the weekdays, that's the best thing. If it's not possible, and you only saw on Shabbos that the feeder, the lining is not in, then you could put it in on Shabbos and try, if you could take it out once or twice during the winter, in order to be choishish for Shita Saravoz and Shavit Alaivi. But Rabbi Shlomo Zalman and other poets can hold that even if you put it in for the whole winter, it's still not considered tfira because the essence of a zipper means it is a thing which is made to put in and take out. Question Can a Ger Tzedek say Kadesh Yosem on his parents, the Goyim. And number two, can I get a tzedek, say Kaddish Yosem, if his biological Goyish parents are still alive? Because we know a person which has his parents still alive don't, doesn't say Kaddish Yosem. Could I get a tzedek, say Kaddish Yosem? And the answer to both questions is a get tzedek once he is getting into Klal Yisrael, he finishes his Gairis, according to Halacha, is Gershen Noshen is Gair, Kekotn Shenoy Ledum. He's like a newborn child. 
has no connection to his biological parents. And therefore, yes, he could say Kaddish Yosem for anyone else, even if his parents are still alive. And no, you don't say Kaddish on your non-Jewish parents since you have no connection to them anymore and they are non-Jews. And even if they were Magai themselves, you and your parents had no connections. So you don't say Kaddish on them. But if he wants to say Kaddish on someone else, even if parents are still alive, he could still he could say Kaddish because he has no connections to his biological parents. Question. We like to put in Halberg egg in the Choland and eat it Shabbos in the morning. Can we take it out from the Choland Shabbos in the morning and dip it in into a cup of cold water in order to cool it off? And if we cannot, can we rinse it off with cold water? A very good question. The Alter Rebbe writes in Shechan Orach, Simashin Yitches, Sof Siv Chof, it's not permitted to take a piece of meat, which is hot, Yat Soldas Boy, and to put it in into a liquid which is cold. Because although you could um, mix together hot water and cold water, and we don't say there's a problem of Bishl, the cold water does not get Nisbashl cooked through the hot water, but since this is a Dover Gish, it's a solid piece of meat. And it's Yat Saldas boy where you put it in into a glass or a plate which has liquid. We say that till the water cools off the solid meat, a tiny drop of the water gets cooked, and therefore it is Bishl. So, therefore, this is basically a Mugnavrum, Mugnavrum says it, Al Treba Paskasit La Halocha. And therefore, you cannot take a hot boiling egg which is just out from the Choland and dip it in into a cup which has cold water because till the, the egg will be become cold a drop of water will, would uh, be in its bashel will be cooked and that's osser. The same will also go you cannot take out a hot piece of potato and put it in into cold borscht or into cold oil because a tiny drop of the liquid will get cooked till it has the koyach to cool off the potato. So you cannot dip it into to, to a cup of hot water. Now the second question is, can you rinse it off with cold water? And that, it's for that the answer is yes, you could. Because since the water keeps on running constantly, so this half a second which the cold water is connected, touches the hot egg, we say does not, in this second it doesn't get cooked. When you put in an egg in water, it has time to cook the water, and therefore it's usher. But once you rinse it off with cold, hot, with cold water from the sink, it is not a problem because it's a very tiny second that this water is touches the egg, and therefore it is not a problem to rinse it over with cold water. And this is how it's passed in the Shmir Shabbos Kechusa, Peirik Aleph, Sif, Samach Zayin, and the Mo'ira Shabbos, Chaylik Aleph, Sima Vuv, and Shabbos Kehalucha, Peirik Yidbais, Sif Tez Vuv, and Sif Tez Zayin. Now there are some poiskim which will say that you could put it in also in a cup of hot water, but as I mentioned before, the Mugnavrum says you cannot do that, and the Alter Rebbe passes like that. And we, as Chsidei Chabad, which go according to the Alter Rebbe, could not put in a egg or a potato in a cold liquid. Question: Is it okay for one to have a variety of mezuzas with different scripts? like Sfardi, Ari, or Alter Rebbe scripts in one house. Now the Shara Chiva, Simala Madhuv, Sifkun Aleph, 
brings down a machloikas if one uh, type of script puzzles the other type of script. That means if the Alter Rebbe script uh, puzzles the Arizal or puzzles the 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 Bes Yosef or not. It brings down from the Birke Yosef, Beshem the Maram Chaviv, Maram Alka, that there is possible. That one script passes the other script. But a whole bunch of other Achroinim disagree with them and hold that it's not a problem. And it's brought down Mugen Geboirim, similar to Mugen Geboirim, similar to Mugen Geboirim, and also in Shal Shivas Marsham, Chaylik Bay Simen Kivchuf. And Minka Cheruf and Aschayim has a whole Shmiz that basic, basically it's not necessary that one script passes the other. But since we have poiskim which say it is a problem, so therefore the skumas of poiskim is that whenever it is in one um, Sefer Torah, for instance, that means some areas in Sefer Torah will be Arizal, some will be Sfardi, some will be the Alter Rebbe, it is a problem, and therefore you should not do it because since there are poiskim which say one passes the other one, when it's in one Sefer Torah, which is Tarte the Sosra, so you should not do it. But that's only if it's in a way that it's in one Sefer Torah. But when it is separate mezuzahs, separate doors, it is not a problem to have one door should have a mezuzah according to the Bas Yosef, and one door according to Arizal, and one door according to the Alter Rebbe, since every door in every mezuzah is a separate mitzvah, so it's not a problem. And this is how it's passed in Maris page 8. Question. Is the Alter Rebbe script preferred? And the answer is yes, of course. If it is written according to Allah, of course the Alter Rebbe's ksav is preferred. But we have to make sure it's written according to the Allah because there are some soifra which write according to the Alter Rebbe and it is problematic halachically because it is some letters of the Alter Rebbe is quite difficult to make and if you don't make it correctly um, it can have a problem halacha so therefore if you have a soifra which writes the Alter Rebbe's kisaf perfect and it's 100% according to halacha yes it's preferred that we should go according to the Alter Rebbe's Ksav. Question. Can I make Havdallah and Matzah Shabbos before I dive in Mayrif? Yes, you can do that. The Alter Rebbe writes in Shechon Orach, Tzimah Rosh Tzadik Gimel, Sif Aleph. Quote. Nahagim, the meaning is that we delay davening Mayrif at Matzah Shabbos because we want to be Moisev Michal HaKodesh we want to bring in and have Shabbos should be extended into the weekdays so therefore we push off a little bit to Davin Meirev um, Amat Shabbos to bring in some more minutes of the weekdays into Shabbos but the Alter Rebbe finishes that right when you see Gimel Kechuvim Ritzufim, right when you see three stars which is right next to each other which means it is night a person is permitted to make Havdallah and make Amalacha even though he did not Davim Meirev the same does he write in Simen Rash Tzadik Dalat Siv Beis that a person which makes Havdallah and a kois before Tvilas Meirev still has to say Havdallah when he davens afterwards. Meirev still has to say Atuchoyen Antoni. So we see that the Rebbe writes in two places that you could make Havdallah and Akois before you daven Meirev and Matzah Shabbos. Question. I was by a wedding and uh, I saw that the witness for the condition was a um, second cousin of uh, a second, two second cousin 
through wife were Aedas. Is that okay or it's possible and you have to make the Kedushan again? So the question is if uh, two second cousin through marriage are possible for being Aedas, for Kedushan, for Aksuba, etc. The Machaba writes, These are the people which are Apostle Aedas. Brothers, that it's called Rishon Barishon. Two brothers, it's called Rishon Barishon. The Apostle for Aedas. Their children, which means first cousins. Apostle Aedas, and they're called Shaini Basheni. Shaini Basheni means second to second. Shaini Basheni is Apostle Aedas. Their children, that means the grandchildren of the brothers, that means second cousin, which is called Shlishi Bishlishi, they are not Apostle Aedas. So the Machaba Pastans. Shaini Bishaini, that means first cousins, Apostle Aedas. First, once removed, is already Koshal Aedas. And of course, second cousins are Koshal Aedas. And this is no difference if it's blood, second cousin, or through marriage. Marriage makes a person the same as a blood cousin. For instance, a person is a first cousin through marriage, is possible Aedas. So, a cousin, a relative, through marriage is still considered a relative and it's possible Aedas. But that's only if it is brother-in-law's first cousins. Second cousins, as by your case, it is kosher Aedas by Kiddushin. By a git, by a get, we are machmer to pasl shlishi bishlishi and even revi bi That means even the third cousins, we are still machmer by a get, shouldn't be aidas. After third cousins, we are makel. But even a third cousin, we pasl by a get. But by kiddushin, we don't pasl. But even though we don't pasl second cousins by a chasana by Kiddushin. Uh, the Nachlas Shiva writes that like Kitchila, the meaning is that you don't take cousins, even Shlishi Bishlishi, that means even second cousins, we don't take to be Aedas for a chasana. So to answer your question, like Kitchila, we don't take second cousin to be Aedas. But if it happens to be that second cousins were Adam on a Kedushin or on a Ksuba, it is kosher with the Evet, and you don't have to make over the Ksuba, you don't have to make over the Kedushin. Question. I washed Melchi dishes with a band-aid on one finger. While I was peeling onions and garlic with a flashing knife, I realized that I was wearing that same band-aid. What is the status of the onion and garlic? The answer is, is no problem. The onion does, does not get melachix because it touches a band-aid which was on your hand while washing melachig dishes. But since you cut it with a fleshy knife, the onion or garlic is fleshy. But nothing happened because you washed dishes, even you washed it with hot water and uh, you had on a band-aid, it's not a problem that with the same band-aid um, you uh, cut a knife, an onion with a fleshy knife. But you have to make sure to wash it off just in case some ban of the milchik stayed somewhere underneath the band-aid and it might went on fall on the garlic so therefore it's kedai to wash it off but it does not become treif 
and it does not become melechik and it stays fleshic since you use the fleshic knife and it's okay. Question Is it okay to cut onions or garlic with a melechik knife on a fleshic dish? And if you did cut it, is it a problem? Does it get usher or not? Now the Chochmas Odom Klal Chovov Siv Beis writes that if a, if a person cut um, something which is sharp, he speaks about herring, and a plate, a dish which is usher, treif, um, the herring becomes usher. Why? Because since you have a knife over here, and there is all salty, sharp, so the pushing of the knife together with the sharp thing takes out the bleas from the plate and what you cut it and therefore it is a problem to eat and it finishes although I, I heard from people they are makel, they are lenient with it I don't agree with that and I hold it's a problem also the dastoire b'janrov and simon tzadik vuf speaks about this question if you could cut a, with a milchig knife an onion on a fleischig teller on a fleischig plate and it brings down that in Sefer Yehoshua Psukum Sima Kivchuf Beis holds it's not a problem only when you use it in a uh, grinder etc but not when you have a knife and the knife cuts it only on the, pla on the plate but it finishes that means I don't understand exactly the safe Yeshia and he, he doesn't want to be makel like the safe Yeshia and he makes a difference if you cut it strong that means if the knife went down on the plate strongly or, uh, or uh, gently and he says, if it went very harsh, then you should be machmar. If you went very gently, you could be Michael. And uh, afterwards, he says, all of this is only if you used a knife which is fleshic, and the plate was milchik, because since most um, time when you use a knife which is fleshic, it comes with hot. So therefore it's a problem. But if you use the milking knife, you could be linear. So to answer your question, is it okay to cut a onion with a milking knife on a fleshing plate or vice versa? No. Like Tchila, you should not do that. You should not cut it. And if you did cut it, if both are ben yoyma, you should kasher it. If you can. If you can't kasher it, then you could be making. But if you could kasher it, you could, you should kasher it. That's only if it was a ben yoyma. But if it wasn't a ben yoyma, then you don't have to kasher it, and you could rely on the post which say that it is not uh, considered and it is not a problem. So to sum it up again, it's not kedah, you should not cut a milchige with a milchige knife, a onion or garlic on a fleshig plate or a fleshig cutting board or vice versa. That means a fleshig knife on a milchige cutting board. If you did it, if it's ain't a ben yoyma, you don't have to do anything about it. If it is ben yoyma or one keli is ben yoyma, you should cash it if you can, the, the ben yoyma one. And if you cannot cash it, it's such a keli that you cannot cash it then you could be lenient and you don't have to cash it. Thank you for joining us and please join us again for the next year and send in the questions to inbox at anash.org. Good night and have a wonderful week.